The last weeks of warmth at the Tidmarsh Wildlife Sanctuary in Plymouth. Despite 2022's drought across the region, life shows little sign of slowing down. It's a welcome and familiar pattern, but those patterns are shifting. So I consider monarchs to be the canary in the coal mine. Indicator species tell us what has changed or is changing in the natural world. Their health or decline helps forecast our future. When things grow out of whack, uh, we'll see it in some of these indicator species first. Tim Puapolo is a park ranger for the city of Cambridge. And these monarch butterflies were all raised in captivity to fulfill their destiny of migrating down to Mexico. Here at the water department in Fresh Pond, Puapolo raises, tags, and releases monarch butterflies. This project helps boost our local populations and it spreads awareness about the dangers the monarch butterfly is facing. Puapolo contacted Chronicle shortly after monarchs made global headlines in July of 2022. The IUCN, the International Union of the Conservation for Nature, declared monarch butterflies as an official endangered species. And that's due because we've lost almost 90% of the population since the 1990s. The reasons, says Puapolo, deforestation, pesticides, and extreme weather, which disrupt migration and kill the monarch caterpillar's most important source of food, milkweed. Monarch butterflies have their bright orange wings as a warning that they are poisonous to any birds. But the trick is, they're not born poisonous. They have to become poisonous by consuming milkweed and milkweed alone. Milkweed gets its name from the milky white sap that runs in it. This is a latex-based toxin. The city grows milkweed along the reservoir and feeds the leaves to young butterflies. This is common milkweed. Uh, we try to propagate this one because it has the largest size leaves. Puapolo hopes homeowners plant milkweed to help monarchs thrive, thus creating their own butterfly effect. It's the most well-traveled insect of North America. Every year they fly from New England back down to Mexico, and then it'll take four generations to get back up here as they follow the bloom of milkweed up the coast and across the continent. This is seaside goldenrod. These are for butterflies, also every other kind of pollinator as well. Kim Smith's love of the outdoors is on vibrant display in her award-winning wildlife documentaries. Close to her heart and her lens is a famous tiny shorebird, the piping plover. This is the seventh year of working on the piping plover film project. That's seven years filming along the North Shore of Massachusetts, including here at Winthrop Beach. The piping plovers breed along the East Coast, and they also breed in the Great Lakes and Great Plains. They don't really start laying eggs until um, mid-May. The piping plovers, when they hatch, are about the size of a marshmallow with little tiny toothpick legs. And they are instant movie stars. They look vulnerable, but they're super smart birds. Piping plovers nest right on the beach in shallow areas that can be easily destroyed. Habitat loss is a constant concern for shorebirds, says Carolyn Mostello. She's a coastal waterbird biologist with the State Department of Fisheries and Wildlife. Climate change is a big worry for all of these species. We know that sea levels are rising. The frequency and the intensity of storms is increasing, and that's very problematic for birds that are nesting on the beach. Piping plovers are listed as an endangered species in most of North America. The average is only 1.4 chicks survives per a nest of four. Protecting them during beach season, however, can cause pushback from visitors and property owners a portion of the beach will be open for the public to recreate on, and a portion will be a buffer area for the birds. I think we've been pretty successful at balancing those two things, but you know, you can't make everybody happy all of the time. Because of that vigilance, piping plovers are faring better in Massachusetts, which has the largest breeding population along the Atlantic coast. Piping plovers now number about a thousand pairs in Massachusetts, and that's up from about 125 pairs um, about 30 years ago. Good news for these small birds who are big on surprises, says Smith. Within a few minutes of hatching, 
chicks start feeding themselves, but they rely on mom and dad to regulate their body temperature. I think if people saw how beautiful they were and just how, how vulnerable they are, but also how charismatic and what big personalities they have, they care more. Pretty cute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Kim Smith has also made award-winning films on monarch butterflies mm -hmm. and snowy owls, and she's also a landscape architect. A lot going on. And if you're wondering when those monarch butterflies start showing up mm -hmm. in Mexico, well, it's a trick question because mm -hmm. they're already there. They winter in Mexico oh. from November to March, which sounds lovely. It does sound lovely. <laughs> They've chosen wisely. <laughs>